Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, and I'm going to uh, just try to bring some things out. We get ready to celebrate Christmas. If you were here last week, we kind of put to rest what Christmas is not about. We talked about some paganism that has creeped in. We talked about the argument of the origin of Christmas and all that good stuff. So we as a church celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. And I believe that we ought to because it's a chance to tell the world that a Savior was born. Amen. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah is written, for those of you who don't know, years and years and years and years and years ago, before the child is born. Amen. And Isaiah gives a lot of interesting prophecies. They say about what? There's about 40 to 60 prophecies, not concerning Jesus. There's probably over 300 prophecies in the Old Testament concerning Jesus. But 40 to about 60 prophecies concerning his birth alone that are accurate. Now, that might not mean nothing to you, but they say the odds of that happening is you probably got a better chance of being hit by lightning than for some people to make a prophecy over 40 of them and for them to come to pass to the accuracy of which Jesus brought everyone to pass. This is no normal child. This is no normal man. This man is the God man. Amen. 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 And so Isaiah prophesies here and he says, for to us, a child is to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called, what? Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. I want to take you, can we read some scriptures today? Can we just read the Bible today? Go to Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, and this is going to, I'm going to come back to this though, but let's read the Bible today. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Now this is written way before this has ever happened. And imagine saying this, right? That the virgin will be with child. How can a virgin be with child? How can this be, seeing that I know not a man? And we know the answer to that. The Holy Spirit shall come upon you, amen? amen. For the child that you're carrying will be called the Son of God. The Bible says the virgin will be with child and will give birth to us what? A son. Right? And he will be called Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Go to Matthew 1, 23. Matthew chapter, we just read in the Bible today, amen? amen. Matthew 1, 23 says this. The, uh, 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 the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel. Which means God. it's no ordinary child. If you ever want to know what God would do if he was a human being, how would he act towards people if God was a human being? You have an example, his name. Yeah is Jesus. God is with us. It makes a whole lot of difference when you think about it that way, right? We're going to talk about the triune God in a minute. Let's read some more scriptures. Go to John 3, verse number 16. Hallelujah. For unto us what? A child is born and a son given. A child was born, but a son was given. Amen. For God so loved the world that he gave his, only, his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Go with me to John chapter 1 verse 14. Amen somebody today. For those of you who didn't read your Bible in a long time, I'm helping you out today. Say Amen. John chapter 1 verse 14. The word became flesh. And notice that the word is capitalized because that's synonymous with Jesus. The word became flesh and, was, and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory. The glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. So the word Jesus was made flesh. Amen somebody. 
uh, Matthew 28, 18. Not only his son is given, but the government shall be on his shoulders. He's got authority. As a matter of fact, he don't just got some authority. Jesus came to them and said, all authority. Y'all hearing me in here? Wait, what does all mean? Everything. What does all mean, church? Everything. Come on, talk to me today. Everything. There is nothing that happens that God is not aware of, in charge of, causing, allowing, however the semantics you want to word it. This just simply says it this way. God has all authority where? In heaven and on earth has been given to who? Jesus. I wish I had a church that was excited about Amen. that. Amen. Not no American government. Amen. You know a lot of Christians were ready to die when President-elect got voted in. I wish they knew Matthew 28, 18. Amen. Except, oh, y'all, I'm dumb. Go to Luke 21, 15. Not only is he have all authority, but the Bible says that he's a wonderful counselor. Jesus gives this whole thing of what's going to happen, and then he says, for I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. How many know that we've got a counselor in Jesus? Amen. We've got the word to counsel us in every area of our lives. Amen. I mean, if you want to make it personal, God is the best marriage advisor. Oh, yeah. Amen. Talk to me in here, somebody. Amen. He tells you how you ought to love your wife, husband. Amen. Love her like Christ loved the church. Amen. Amen, somebody. Don't love like the world loves. He tells you how to treat your husband, ladies. Yes. Submit. All right. Amen. All right. <laughs> If you a husband in here, make some noise, son. <laughs> Ladies don't like that part of the Bible. Turn your wife and say, girl, you better submit. <laughs> you, you, you know, a lot of men scared in here. Sherry, wherever you at, you better submit. <laughs> now, obviously, I'm saying it in a terrible way. It doesn't mean it in the way I'm saying it. Amen, somebody. But he's the best marriage advisor. Amen, somebody. Amen. He's the best. He's the best financial advisor. Amen. You know why people don't like to go to God for financial advice? Because every other financial advisor on this earth tells you how you can save, how it's all about you, how you can secure your future, how you can do this, how you could take in money. When you come to him for advice on money, the first thing he tells you, though, is do the opposite. Give, and it shall be. Don't nobody want no advice like that in this country. You want to know save, and it shall be saved unto you. But maybe if you tried his way, he's the best financial advisor. He'll show you how to build a home. He'll give you the best advice on how to be a father. Amen. He'll give you the best advice on how to be a mother. Y'all are hearing me in here. Amen. He'll give you the best advice on how to govern your relationships. Amen. Talk to me in here. Y'all hearing me? Yes. He'll tell you what business relationships you ought to have and what you ought not to have. Amen. He'll, he's the best person to pick your friends. Amen. He's the best person to pick your career. You know, we always tell people, what do you want to be when you grow up? Don't talk like that if you're a Christian. Start telling your kids, what do you think the will of God is for your life? You know, it's not something vague out there you got to choose. He's got a plan and a purpose for you. The reason you've probably been feeling how you're feeling in life is because you ain't fall into that plan yet. you like a puzzle that ain't in the right spot. But when you begin to fit in where you belong, it feels great. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He'll tell you what friends to pick. He'll tell you what college to go to. He'll tell you all of this stuff. Greater than that, though, he, ain't, he, he don't exist just for your personal being. He'll tell you why society is the way it is. Mm -hmm. If you ever look up and you get depressed at the news, he'll tell you why. He'll tell you what governments exist for. 
He'll make sense out of things that you never... He'll tell you why the trees bloom. Hallelujah. Y'all like, like... He'll tell you why the sun rises. He'll tell you why the... Y'all are hearing me in here? He'll make sense out of things that you never even thought. God will begin to, you know, the Bible, the Bible really, the Bible says things like go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider his ways and be wise. He'll, he'll show you things in nature that you have not even seen. God has counsel in every situation available. The Bible says if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask. God will give them freely. There's no reason to be dumb in the kingdom of God. Amen. Now, notice I didn't say you're going to get a degree in the kingdom of God. But how I many of you know we serve the type of God without degrees? He blesses you and gives you knowledge and experience. Yep. Now, you might not have a piece of paper, but that don't mean you have to be dumb. Amen. There's no excuse for ignorance. The Bible says those that uh, lack knowledge, they perish. But the other part of that verse says because they refuse to accept knowledge. Yep. It's one thing to be ignorant and not know, but it's another thing when you're being taught to refuse to be taught. Uh -huh. You're just plain dumb. Yep. Amen, somebody. Y'all hear in these scriptures? Yes. He is a wonderful counselor. Right? Go to, go to Luke 2.14. Luke 2.14. We read in the Bible today. I'm getting ready to finish. <laughs> Definitely going to try not to finish in time for you. <laughs> Glory to God in the what? Ah, yes. Sound like a celebration to me. Yeah. Why you celebrate Christmas? Because they were celebrating on the first one. Yeah. Glory to God in the what? Ah, yes. And on earth. I don't know about you, but his favor rests on me. Amen. Colossians 1.20. Peace on earth. Peace on earth. Peace on earth. And through him to reconcile to himself all things. Why did he come? To reconcile all things Amen. to himself. You see, you always... But when you begin to... You begin to realize the world is really a gift to Jesus from God. All things were made by him and for him. He wasn't made for you. You were made. Oh, y'all don't want to hear that because you want God to revolve around your earth. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Amen. Whether things on earth or in heaven. How did he do this? By making peace through his blood shed on the cross. One more scripture and then we go back to the book of Isaiah. Is that all right? Yes. Is that all right? Yes. Doesn't matter to me. Got to read it. Read it. Anyway. Amen, somebody? Yes. Well, go back to the book of Isaiah. Go back to the book of Isaiah. You know... I'm a big sport fanatic, big fan of many sports. My brother over here is a big fan of football. Like basketball, I think I'm a bigger basketball fan. I think that, I think a lot of things. But uh, what's amazing about these sports that, uh, 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 if you've ever been to an arena, if you've ever been to a football arena or a basketball, there's so many things happening. So many things happening. I mean, if you walk into a football, you know, they're tailgating, they're, they're drinking beer, they're eating food, they're barbecuing out in the cold. They're doing all sorts of things. That's happening in the, from the parking lot. Then when you get into the stadium, there's a whole other thing going on in there. You got all types of fanatics that had season tickets doing stuff. You see people dressed with all painted face, and it's the one time you can just... Like be crazy and it's cool at the game. It has nothing to do. You know, well, I guess it does, right? They paint the face. Sometimes you watch these basketball games. They got guys in the back who buy tickets just to distract the free throws, oh, dressed yeah. in all yeah. sides. You're like, bro, how can he shoot a free throw with that dude sitting <laughs> right there in that front seat looking like that? Guys take their shirts off, do all types of stuff, and they're not fitting, built, and nice. You know what I mean? They out there like, ah, 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 shoot a free throw now. All sorts of stuff is happening 
there's music playing that's cheering the crowd on. Da 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 da. Bum bum defense. Bum bum defense. Bum bum defense. Bum bum defense. You go crazy, and you know there's all this stuff. You know, and they play da 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 da. Charge, and, and you know you go to the baseball game. Take me out to the ball. There's peanuts being eaten. People throwing stuff at each other. Fight break out in another park. Why you throw peanuts at me? All sorts of stuff is happening at this game. Y'all yes. know what I'm talking about? Yes. You know, not only that, but on the field itself, you got all these players on the sidelines, some of them in suits, some of them dressed, some of them off in the corner riding a bike, some of them putting on clothes to stay warm. All of this is happening. You got a coach throwing stuff down. You got Steve Kerr always sitting there because Steph Curry's on the floor. No need to worry. Amen. You got all these things happening. You got, you know, LeBron coaching the coach. Amen. Hallelujah. You got all these things happening. Amen. Right? And then you get on the floor, you got the referees running up and down. <laughs> you got all these things happening. You know, the referees throwing flags. You got oh, uh, 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 coaches throwing the referees. They show you stuff from other games and highlights. You're happy when the Cowboys lose. <laughs> Even happier when that team up in uh, Massachusetts, the, the guys, the guys you can't throw regular footballs. <laughs> Paul Pierce is back. I don't know why. What? Yeah, he's playing for the Clippers. What? He probably came back Whoa. just to guard uh, LeBron, but we got to preach a sermon here. We're going to talk about this later. Sorry, sorry. All this stuff is happening on the court. Then as you come close into the court, you have the actual players on the court. I'll tell you what is amazing about all of that. I'll tell you what's amazing about all that. You got all these football people geared up. If you remove the football, small little football, if you remove the basketball and you bring all those people in, and you put the players on the field and there's no football and everybody's ready. Mm -hmm. They all become pointless. Yes. Mm -hmm. And everything they're doing there becomes just a big spectacle like, yo, y'all are really bugged out. What are y'all doing? <laughs> Hi! Okay! <laughs> Pass! I got it! <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is everything that is occurring <laughs> around there is happening because of one little Spalding, <laughs> one little, what the football company, Spalding, Spalding. 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 whatever, as long as Giants win. <laughs> that one little ball makes the difference of everything. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you all that to tell you that the one baby that was born that first Christmas Amen. you remove him out of this world first of all we'd be the most miserable of people coming and shouting and reading a book and praying and all that stuff and there ain't no ball there ain't no Jesus and a lot of stuff that got nothing to do with him happens around him. All these Christmas trees and bells and whistles and mistletoe, kissing people, all kind of stuff. They got nothing to do with him. People create all types of stuff around him. But the only thing that matters in that sport game is where that ball is. You move that ball a little bit closer to a certain line, everybody knows they're about to win. You move it further away, they're about to lose. That ball, the position of that basketball, where it's going. I mean, when you see these guys take that last minute shot, your breath just turns into eternity. And if it goes in, it changes the whole atmosphere. If it comes out, they're going to riot in Canada. If the puck don't, amen. Changes everything. It don't matter what everybody else around the arena is doing. It matters what position that baby holds in your life. Amen. 
That determines everything. For, why? Because Isaiah is telling you here who the baby is. First of all, a child is born. What does that mean? Mary had a child. But it's not just a child being born. Look at the next verse. Somebody gave a son. Do you see that? A child was born, yes. But somebody gave a son. Right? And the government shall be upon him. What kind of child is this? All authority is in this child. Not only that, he will be called wonderful. Is filled with all the wisdom of the ages. All the secrets to life. All the mysteries of why we, you know, they ask you when you go to college, why am I here? Who am I? Where am I going? All, this, all these questions. The answer is found in the child. Amen. Not only is he a wonderful counselor, but look at this. For the first time you got in all the religions a child claiming to be God. He never left Jesus. Never once ever gave you the opportunity to say he's just a prophet. Now he was prophetic, but he ain't a prophet. He is every prophecy. Y'all got to understand that. If Jesus didn't exist, prophets had no reason to live. Y'all got to understand that. Every prophecy that came to pass and will ever come to pass is about one thing. Jesus. So when you lower him to a prophet, you missing the mark, ladies and gentlemen. Not only he claims to be God, he never said, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. One man asked me, he said, show us the Father. He said, have I been with you so long? But you don't recognize I am among you. Mm. He is God. Wisdom. Power. Watch this. Watch this. Now it starts off by saying he's a child and a son. But then you get to the end of the verse and says he's everlasting what? Father. If there ever was a triune statement being made, it's right here. Father, son, and hope. How could a son be the father? I wish I had a church who understand what I'm saying here. The father said, I'm going to come down incarnate. Hallelujah. Sent his son, right? And then here's where I want to focus all that other stuff. There's another theological discussion. And then the Bible says, he is the prince of peace. Prince of peace. Prince of Peace. When I was young, and even now when I see my kids, it is so easy to please shy for Christmas time. I, I'm a gift giver, amen. I give to my kids. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with that. It is so easy to please them. They come with their Christmas list. Spider-Man, Batman, I want whatever, whatever. And the list is like, all right, cool. As a grown man, though, when they get them toys at Christmas, I look at Spider-Man, I'm like, what? what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> but shy in his world, ah, ooh, you know what I mean? But I'm like, uh, I just don't feel like running around. You know, so sometimes I'd be like, okay, let me, let me play with shy. And so shy would be like, dad, play. And I'd be like, okay. Like, no, dad, he's got to talk and move. Shy, and then the first thing Shy does is, you want to fight? And I'm like, you just, you just killed my guy. You just killed my guy. And so I try to get into it to see the joy he's experiencing. I'm like, okay. And then after a while, my wife would walk in and be like, what's going on? Like, Bring this down. No oh, joy as an adult. The only joy I'm doing it for is because of him. But to him, he's easy to please. And it's easy to buy for them. Then they grow up and they get a little older. <laughs> and they become, I want Jordans. I want iPhone 7. And I want, you like, you're going to have to get a job soon. How old are you? When can I get my son out? Legally? <laughs> Right? It becomes a little harder. 
Then when they jump in their 20s, the gift request changes. You go ask them, what do you want for Christmas? Hey, man, no, whatever you can afford. By the time they reach 30s, 40s, 50s, by the time you become an adult, they just like, whatever. And so because you keep bothering them, most adults will be like, if you really want to give me something, just give me the money. <laughs> if you really want to give me something, just give me the money. Well, why is that? There's something about these gifts that I kind of see happening as we grow. To a child, the joy is toys. The joy is these things. But then when they get older, it seems like everything that we ask for Somehow, we find our joy, our purpose, our meaning. And so to a child, he runs around, he puts on a Spider-Man mask, and you can't tell Shy. He's not, he went to a birthday party the other day, he had face paint, he painted himself as Spider-Man, he came over to me, he just stood there. <laughs> this Shy. So I'm like, what's good, bro? He's like, <laughs> I'm like, what's up? And he goes, he did, he did the hand sign, right? Whatever, Spider-Man. And I'm like, oh, I get it. You're Spider-Man. He's like, yeah. Like, you cannot tell him he is not Spider-Man. In that moment, he will wet your face. <laughs> but then when they turn teenagers, they want Jordans. You can't buy them no Payless. You're like, yo, son, I found you some crazy shacks. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about? You, yo, yo, like my dad, right? When I was a kid, my dad came over. He was like, yo, I got you these, these sneakers. I found them. They was on the clearance side. It was good. I'm like, all right, let me see what he got. Voice. Yeah. Olympians. Y'all remember those? Olympians. What? Oh. That was struggle life, bro. Pony. Y'all remember that? Why do these kids want this? I want a certain jacket. Tim's. Y'all remember that back in the days? Tim's and the, and the goose. Wu Tang had everybody. Come on, y'all. Don't make me look like I'm the only. You had the biggest jeans, and you stuck your jeans in the Tim's. You walking around like, like a lumberjack. Y'all remember that? Rizza. Rizza. I know, but come on, man. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You found yourself in the things you own as a teenager. Ain't nobody could tell me nothing when I had a beeper. Oh when I had anybody ever y'all remember that? Yes. Listen, this was only about ten years ago, guys. I know technology has increased that fast. This is about 10, 15 years ago. Y'all was rolling with beepers. What you had ten years ago, Steve? Oh, you were twelve. I was the Scottell Pigeons. Scott Scott, okay, a fancy beeper came out. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Don't give me a hard time up here. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Then the Star Tap phones came out. Couldn't tell me nothing. Y'all remember? Y'all remember T Mobile Sidekick? Yeah! yeah. You ain't got nothing to do, you just walk around swiveling it. That's it, that's it. <laughs> you go to sleep and be like, kind of funny, you, you don't got a kid for it. There we go. Certain sneakers, certain phones, you have to have these things. Then when you got to college, you realize, mom ain't cooking like that for you anymore. You got to fend for your own. They gave you a credit card, and you thought, like, <laughs> I'm paid. And you start swiping, right? Swiping those swiping. <laughs> exactly, because I, I signed up because they gave me a free T-shirt. Yep. <laughs> so at 20, when people came and asked me what I want for Christmas, I really looked at my needs. Right. Whatever shoe you could buy me. I'm in college at this point. Well, I'll take some voice at this point. 
Yo, can you just buy me gas? <laughs> yes, yes. You might know what I'm talking. Like, could you, yes. could you just fill me up for two months? Yes. And we go on. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Right. Exactly. In the 40s and 40s, you're like, because what begins to happen is you begin to realize that everything on this earth that you're chasing mm -hmm. and you thought is fulfilling you, it's just not doing it. Just not, but forget it. By the time you're 50, 60, and all that, you're like, don't even worry about me, man. Because I'm now searching for something different. I'm searching for peace. I'm searching for counsel and wisdom. I need, I need somebody to make sense out of all of this for me. It reminds me of the game of Monopoly. Come, sir. <coughs> I heard one of my preachers gave, favorite preachers give an analogy, pull that up, pull that up, gave an analogy in this game, and I said, I want to demonstrate this to y'all. Sam, you remember when you used to come to the crib and play this, me, you, Brian, and all of us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It got real, right? Yeah. We would open up the box. Yeah, you know, Sherry was there. Sherry steals every second. This is one game where I'm not a Christian. Like, there's no Bible in this game, so do not apply scriptures in this. It, there's no Bible in this box. <laughs> Rules? You better keep your eye on this bank. Anybody know what I'm talking about? We would open the board. Now, there's a lot of games I played, but this was probably one of my favorites. And I think because this imitated real life, it gave you a feel of what real life is like. Do you understand what I'm saying? So we would pick. Who who you pick, Sam? Who, who? Give, me the, give me the car. You want the car? Yeah, yeah. The car is always popular. What else? What else? The horseshoe. Now I used to run with either the boots or the dog. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? It's my dog right there. You know what I mean? We would start on go. I mean, it's just like life a little bit. You got jail. I mean, you can visit or you can go. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Shout out to anybody who ever been to jail. You got the electric company, Con Ed. You got DEP, Waterworks. You got the subway. You got the Long Island Railroad. You got Amtrak. Right? What else they got? Luxury tax. They got income tax. This sounds like life, don't it? You got free parking always. You know what I mean? Shout out for free parking in this life. Especially when you're in Manhattan. Woo! Free parking don't mean nothing to you when you start out, but when you see the development of the game, you pray for free parking. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Then every now and then, just like life, you get a chance or a community chest where something good or bad you wasn't expecting just happens. <laughs> well, you know, they got some bucked out stuff in a chance. You know, like, like what it says here. You what? Read, Sam. <laughs> you have won a second prize in a beauty contest. Sam, you won a beauty contest. <laughs> He's a shirt model. Model that shirt, bro. How much you collect? $10. He's <laughs> a $10 model. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Or somebody told you about that and you, you made that happen and what? From a sale of a stack, you get stocks. Oh, stocks. Stock, stock. <laughs> from, from a sale of a stack. Stock, 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 stock. There's no school on the board, y'all. There's no school on the You get $45. $45. Okay. Right? Or sometimes you know, some different things happen. All this stuff here. What I say? For each house, for each house, pay, pay twenty five dollars. For each hotel, for each hotel, pay a hundred. 
Well, before we did the events, why this was ex exciting? <laughs> because they would give you money, and I would steal these. I would, I confess, I've stolen money from Monopoly. You would start out with a certain amount, and you throw the dice, and you start the land, and you start to buy property, and you are Donald Trump. For the first time in your life. And you buying property off. Just like life, right? And then after a while it get real. Because they say. The goal of the game is to have the most money. Most property. And whoever has the most. Wins the game. Right? And so you start out cool. You making friends. But then you realize if I owned a certain poor. And increase the value. So everybody wanted Park Place, Boardwalk. They wanted Kentucky Ave. They wanted anything on this corner right here. You wanted to own. It's up there with small fries. Now, yeah, yeah. Baltic Ave and Mediterranean Ave. Anybody going there? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you wanted to own that because you built property. And then you start putting up hotels. You put up hotels and you're making money. You're making, and then friendship goes out the door. More money. You turned Biggie Smalls on the board. <laughs> Sam, we're not really playing. <laughs> You're really getting into this, huh? <laughs> two hotel. Ain't like one hotel? Like, you put two, how many? <laughs> she just want to make that money. <laughs> just... So you got all these things being built, and friends should go out the door. So what would happen in the game is, I'd be like, yo, Sam, I got a proposal. What's up, what's up? Why don't we team up, bro? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm saying, like, you, you, you got Pennsylvania. I got North Carolina Pacific. Listen, sell me Pennsylvania, and I'll hook you up with Marvin Gardens, because you need these two right here. You know what I mean? And, and, and I'll, let, I'll let you not pay rent the first two times you land on me. You can do that. Yeah. 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 So we start, to get, we start negotiating, and he sell me. And it's cool. First two times he landed, he didn't pay rent. But he landed a third time. And Sam's like, yo, remember when you didn't have it? And I hooked you up, and I'm like, bro, I hooked you already. I paid my debt. You're going to have to pay. But I'm going to have to mortgage. You're going to have to do that, because I've been trying to buy your property anyway. Next you know, Sam is out the game. And I'm like, yeah! Then I get whoever out, who out, and it's always down to me and Sherry. <laughs> we find a way in this, the truth. Yeah, yeah. And me and Sherry's there. We never finish the game of Monopoly. Yeah, like, yeah, nah, we're just like, I'm not playing no more. You cheating. <laughs> <laughs> I want to get righteous in the end. The Bible says, you see, you can't. <laughs> but as you begin to win and everybody goes, the money's not real. And the properties are not real. And then they always tell somebody, pack up the game now. And the game is scattered all over. Mm -hmm. Nobody wanna pack it up. <laughs> so you volunteer and you pack it up. And everybody's leaving. And you take the hotels that just was bringing you joy. <laughs> and you realize I'm really broke. <laughs> and it's just one big dream. What's happening here is you begin to realize for that two, three hours you played, it was temporal. It wasn't meant to exist forever. And eventually everything you own go back in the box. And you will be depressed you will be depressed if all you do is live for the temporary moment. You'll never know peace. And whether you like it or not, one day in your life,
because you lived your whole life for everything in this box. And it never brought peace. It never answered the questions you had. It never fixed family. It never did what you thought it would. Matter of fact, everything in this box make you have more enemies. More problems than you started out. And now they're getting ready to close the box. You didn't realize there's a whole life after this box. One thing not in this box that is in real life. Or unto us a child was born. He came in the game. Or unto us somebody introduced a new player, a son. No matter what is happening on that board, all the thoughts. Close the box, you can have peace yes. because you know the Prince oh, of Peace. Yes. Amen. The new paganism in Christmas is materialism. Yes. Everything is to distract you from who this baby is. Yes. But just like a football game, just like a basketball game, the position this child holds your life makes the difference. Yes. Of whether you are winning or losing. If you're here in this place and you don't know Jesus or you playing with Jesus or you know him but you we mean that I run everything. That's what monopoly means. One man is in control. Why is it so appealing to us? Because that's exactly what the flesh want to do. You don't have a monopoly on anything God does. And don't get married to the things of this world. Be in this world, but not of this world. If you're going to work hard in this world, work ten times hard in knowing who God is. Well, why is that? Is it a competition thing? No. It's because the true answers and the true meaning of life is not going to be found there. Found in God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.